Hi, um, so I've not been feeling too well the last couple of days. I've been full of cold. So today I've got a day off from work, so I thought I'd do a little bit of reading. And I've started, as you can probably tell, with Fulton's Principles of Wicca, written by Vivian Crowley. And it says on the front page, it's the only introduction you'll ever need. So that's why I thought I'd start with this book. Even though I've read this before, it's been quite a while and I've not picked up any of these any of my books on Wicca or Paganism for a long, long time. And I think it's about time I get back into it because if I want to be a student of the craft, I need to make sure I know the basics. I need to make sure I understand what I'm doing. And it's the same for everybody out there. If you're interested in Wicca, it's important that you know what you get yourself into. Because if you dive headfirst into it, you can become overwhelmed. You can become, I don't know, it can be too much and it will put you off. And then you might have lost out on something amazing because you've not took your time over learning the basics and something that could have been completely wonderful for you. So that's why I'm doing this. Because I don't want to put myself off. I want to make sure... I Because when I first started reading about Wicca, I thought it was the best thing I've ever started reading. And I was really, really interested. I could really visualise myself growing old, taking parts in rites and sabbats, and making my own oils and incense and dried herbs and making spells and lotions and potions and basically living a life of the Wiccan life. Being a hedge witch or and part of COVID at the same time, that was my dream. And even though I'm unable to join a COVID at the moment because there's none nearby to me, um, I can still see myself doing that. But because it's been such a while such a long time since I've done anything and things drop out of my head I don't know if it's the same for you because everyone's different so I like the idea of refreshing my knowledge and starting from the beginning so that's why I'm doing this so the first chapter in this book is called What is Wicca and it's to put it nicely a little bit dry I really had to force myself to finish reading the first chapter. I don't know whether it's because I've read this before that I found it a bit hard going. Um, However, I really did have to push myself. It talks about who are today's witches. And when I say who are today's witches in the book, this book was published back in 1997. So it's a little redundant, but... Not at the same time. It talks about... It mentions the same passing. Gerald Gardner. Um, one of the founding fathers of... Of modern Wicca. And it quotes him. Um, once. So far. Um, and it talks about covens and community. Uh, how it's good to learn as a group. Compared to only reading, learning things out of books, which is true, like I've just mentioned. However, covens are not for everybody, and if you not don't feel ready for a coven, if you don't feel ready to join a group of like-minded people, if you're still just reading about it, wanted to know a bit about it, don't feel pressured. Um, because you've got to feel ready, because if you don't, then... You're not doing it right. And you want to do it so that you are happy with your choices. Anyway, so um still in the first chapter and it's talking about talks about the origins of Wicca. And it mentions um a few it mentions Di- Diana, one of our one of the goddesses of Wicca. 
and then I was gonna mention something else, but I can't see it because I'm just browsing through it now. I mean, I've read it, but I'm, now I'm browsing. I can't see what I'm looking for, but it does matter. Um, basically, it's just a little bit of history, and it's 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 a bit dry, but it's worth reading. Then it mentions the aspects of Wicca. Mentions the pentagram, that it's a symbol strongly associated with witches, sometimes with sinister connotations. So, and it mentions that there is nothing sinister about it, which is true. And um, the pentagram is a five-pointed star that represents the five elements. It's also a symbol of the perfect human being. The four elements of maternal creation are summoned by the fifth element of spirit, the element that links us to the divine. Um, so which basically means each point of the star is represented by these things. So we've got obviously air, water, earth and fire and spirit. Um, and some people, um, I don't, I don't know if you've come across this before, um, believe that the journey of the woman, of a witch, or what it says, um, to be more precise, a woman's life can be seen as a journey around the pentagram, is what I'm trying to say. So if you start off at the top, the spirit, and um, that's where the wise woman would be. You go down bottom right to bottom right to fire. That's the lover and or the queen. Then you go up to the top left where the maiden is. It's also air. So, so sorry, to go top left to air, which is also the maiden. Then if you go right um, where water is, that's mother, and then you go to bottom left, to earth, that's grandmother, and then if you go from grandmother, from earth, to top centre again, you come back again to spirit, which is great grandmother, a wise woman, and then you go to bottom right again, when you're starting all over again, so it's a constant journey around the pentagram. Anyway, um, so that's basically it, and it ends with an exercise which I've not done yet, but I will. It's a simple exercise to begin, it says, and it's contacting the elements in nature, the meadow visualisation. So it's basically a meditation, which is exactly what I said I was going to focus on. So I'm going to do that and I shall see or talk to you if indeed you are listening next time goodbye